All right. Welcome to the stream. It's Friday. <clears throat> I have a bit of a cold, so I might sound a bit nasal. Hope that's okay. Uh, we're going to be doing... Uh, we're going to be doing days 6 and 7. Uh, apparently they're not as hard as day 5. And maybe even day 8. We'll see how it goes. Alright, let's get started. How is everyone doing today? So I got my editor open right here. So everything is ready. Let's see what we're going to do today. Hi, little Lenny. Boop, boop, day six. Indeed. All right. So we are now going to Island Island. Um, we're trying to make it snow again. That was our goal. Huh. Okay, let's just go directly to the task. Uh, you get a sheet of paper that lists the time allowed for each race and also the best distance ever recorded in that race. Okay, there's a boat race going on. Okay. Um, to guarantee you win the grand prize, you need to be make sure you go farther in each race than the current record holder. The organizer brings you over to the area where the boat races are held. Uh, boats. Okay, toy boats. Big button. And holding down the button charges the boat. And releasing the button allows the boat to move. Boats move faster if their button is held longer. But time spent holding the button counts against the total race time. Uh-huh. Right. You can only hold the button at the start of the race, and boats don't move until the boat button is released. So, uh, the first race lasts 7 milliseconds, the record distance in this race is 9 millimeters. Second race lasts 50 milliseconds, and the 40 and 30. Your toy boat has a starting speed of 0 millimeters per millisecond. For each whole millisecond you spend at the beginning of the race holding down the button, the boat speed increases by one millimeter per millisecond. Okay. Hello, Orphan of Cthulhu. How are you today? <coughs> okay, so we're gonna hold it down. So it's like an optimization problem, basically. Do, 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 do. Aha. Determine the number of ways you can beat the record in each race. Okay. So it's not just about finding something that works, we have to find everything that works. Let's see. So this is the example. Module main where example. Equals and then oops. Bump it in. And now, we have to parse it. Let's grab our parsing code from here. Mm -hmm. Let's see, parse seeds, right? Um, so we do split at length. Okay. So we just need to split on function again. 
and um, let's see. We're just gonna keep it as a list of uh, pars. Takes a list of strings, and we're just gonna keep it as pair of lists. Or maybe, well, let's do a list of pairs. Okay, uh, let's see. We don't need this. So, pars, strings. Uh, let me see what the actual input looks like. Okay. It's just uh, different numbers. Not like uh, a lot more. Let's just do this here. Um, oh, nice shirt. Thanks. Uh, any Times this equals okay so we're gonna do uh, time split at length time times and then we are going to Uh, drop while is space import data dot char is space and we're gonna need is digit also okay and then we are just going to um, DNS is gonna be split on Rest. Okay, so these are all gonna be okay, so we're gonna drop while is space. Let's just do it like this. Um Let's uh, see what this returns. Ah, uh, I don't want to spend time on this. Let's just uh, let's just say here example equals seven And the input, let's just check it out. Input is going to be uh, 56, 34, 71, 71, 135. 792350 and 992430. So for the first one, I think we just uh, we don't need this then. So if we hold down 
let's say total distance so if we if we um, so okay total distance uh, so hold down time time and total time is equal to uh, total time minus hold down time times okay let's see where let's just write here dist The difference is a this times so this is how long we uh, part of the time that we didn't hold down for and then we're just going to multiply that by hold down time Okay, now let's see. Do. So, um, let's go. So, hold down time will change, but not this one. Hold on time. So, let's just see what happens. Print a map dist. So, total time here is nine over uh, the range we can hold down for zero we can hold up to nine gto day six dot hs oh, sorry day six dot hs o day six time day six day six gotta be in the right directory So, uh, if we, so, so because the first, oh, the first race lasts seven milliseconds. Okay, so the total time here is seven. Right, so then we get a uh, six, ten, 12, 12, 10, 6. Okay, now we gotta solve some a uh, linear equations. Um, So the derivative, so let's write again, this yx is equal to uh, y minus x times x uh, which is equal to, this is yx minus x squared and the derivative here, this prime yx is equal to y minus 2x, right? So, we have to solve the equation, um, So we're gonna now map. Let's print that again. So print map this seven, this prime zero to seven. Ah, it's two, 
2 times x So this is like the slope, right? Uh, so I would be better at this with uh, pen and paper. Uh, okay, so this y x is equal to zero if and only if and only if a uh, y is equal to two x. And only if uh, x is equal to y divided by 2. And we can see that here, right? So it's a uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 3.5, or 0, and then 4, 5, 6, 7. So, um,. And let's now see this uh, y x is equal to what was this? This was a uh, y minus x times x. Um, so let's see a uh, this y x equal to zero ah uh, no so so now we have the other is equal to d if and only if uh, y minus x times x is equal to d if and only if a uh, x squared minus 1 times x squared plus y x a minus d is equal to 0 so now we are solving the quadratic Quadratic equation. Quadratic qu qu quadratic equation. And I think this is a b divided by square root of two. Something like that. A quadratic. It's been very very long since I saw this. Yes. Um, minus b plus minus um, okay let's copy paste this so we want a b squared minus 4 AC larger than 0 for two solutions B times squared 4 AC equal to 0 1 solution and if it's less than 0 there is no solution and then x is equal to um, minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all of that 
divided by 2 times a. So I, I assume that for all of these, uh, this equation works. So it's going to be like a parabola, right? So let's say solve x um, y d is equal to uh, let's see so the b here is y so it's minus minus y uh, so we're getting two solutions plus square root of y times y minus 4 so it's going to be plus 4 AC because A is plus 4 times D And then this is all divided by minus 2. <laughs> so we're actually going to have a y minus all of this divided by 2. And that's one of the solutions. And the other solution is going to be at uh, Okay Now let's say, uh, I think it's curry, right? Oh, so let's just uncurry this function. Print uh, uncurry solve x uh, map uncurry solve x over example. Okay. And now it's just complaining that it's uh, that it's uh, these are all integers. Let's just say y i d i and where y is equal to from integral. Uh, yi and d is equal to from integral di int int float float Okay, I think I might be miss messing something up. Um, it is minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4 times ac divided by 2a. Okay, let's uh, write it out again. Let's see. Uh, 
Uh, it's minus D. Uh, it's not plus D. Okay, so now we have to be, so let's see, we have to round up, so let's do here, seal, ceiling, and floor. He doesn't like this. Because we want just the positive numbers. Okay, and then I think part one takes in a pair returns a pair so part one is equal to where t comma t comma f is equal to uh, solve x p p f minus t uh, Is going to be total time and distance. So, total time and distance. Print map part one example three, seven, and ten. Do we have three, seven, and ten options? Okay, so first we could go, let's see, 10, 12, 12, 10. <laughs> Let's see. I think we're uh, out by one. So we get, we're supposed to be getting four, eight, and nine. We're getting three, seven, and ten. We are close though. Let's see, are we supposed to just get ceiling here? Uh, why do we need the quadratic formula? Because we want to figure out the total of number of ways, right? What is the distance? No, sorry, this is supposed to be 30, and this is supposed to be 200. Uh, no, this is the total time here is 30. And then we just go up to 30. 
So here we have exactly 200. Uh, okay, I think it's just in... So we're supposed to take the ceiling in both places. Uh, but we have an off by one error in case there are inter integer solutions. So... Exactly, yeah, we could do that, but we can do this in 01 if we have the quadratic formula, right? Uh, which is what we want. So, um, let's just do uh, T prime, F prime is equal to solve xfttd um, let epsilon be now we're just gonna say um, L is equal to F minus T. So if Yeah, but so what you're saying, right? Orphan is that we should generate all the elements and then check them, right? But we don't need to generate any elements. We we know by the quadratic formula exactly where it's gonna happen, right? Yeah, let me see. If um, let's just plug it in directly, right? If uh, so, we have the two solutions here. Now let's see if this TTF. Is equal to D, then um, we don't need these. Then L plus one else L because then there's like one extra point. No. Okay, let me just see. So we're gonna check. We're not gonna check this. We're gonna check. Um, dt is equal to dist dt t. 
df is equal to this ttf um I think I was correct actually. I think we should be taking the ceiling here, the floor here. Um, so now we're just gonna see. This is the f so this is the first element it stops being that okay yeah okay if dt equals d so it's going to be uh, f minus t um Ah, uh, the thing is that uh, if dt is equal to df, then f minus t minus 1, else f minus t. So because they're not different solutions, they are the same solution. I think that's the trick. So four, eight, nine. Yeah, exactly. Let's uh, let's just see if we are correct here. I think we might have an off by one error, but I'm not sure. We, we might as well check. All right, we did it. So the problem was that um, You can hold the button for at least 11 milliseconds and no more than 19 milliseconds. But that's not really true. So you can you can hold it for 10 milliseconds. Ah, to to beat it. Right. Okay, so the thing that I missed is that a uh, we found the solution uh, where it's exactly 200, but we have to go more than 200, right? Um, so then we don't count. It's really just if dt is equal to d. That's the, that was the thing, right. So it's not, if they, they're the same, it's just if they are, because um, you want to go, we have to go further than the distance, right? I agree that time complexity is better in your solution, but for such small ranges, it won't make a significant difference. Uh, I mean, that's true, but, uh, yeah, okay. 
These are not huge elements, right? But I feel like this is the way to solve it. I don't know. I Because we just have an equation for it, right? We don't need to... Uh... Okay, anyway, we did day part one. Took us 40 minutes though. But, uh, okay. As the race is about to you realize the piece of paper with the race times and record distances. Just has really bad kerning. There's really only one race. Aha. Uh -huh. Ignore the space between the numbers on each line. Okay. See, now it was good to use an equation. Example two. Uh, so this is going to be seven, one, five, three, zero, nine, four, zero, two hundred. It's going to put a five, six, seven, one, seven, nine, ninety nine, three, three, four, one, one, three, five, one, three. Let me actually just uh, grab it from here. Uh, the example one is correct. But for the input, We should make sure it's correct. Okay. So, back to your point. What is it with the time complexity here? Well, this is going to take no time at all. Right? Print. Part one, example two. Because we just used the quadratic formula, right? Seven one five three Exactly. Now, I want to ask you, Cthulhu, how long did your part two solution run for? And was it four milliseconds? Boom. So, but you know, we have an O of one solution, right? So we shouldn't, uh, we should not give in to our dumb coder temptations. All right, well, we did part one, part two, day six. Ah, that was quite easy. I mean, we did have to revisit the formula we did some uh, calculus but cool let's move on right away to day seven we are trying to get to day eight today and then we will have been then we will have catched up thought it just do, 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 do. Let's see. Okay. Let me go to
we check one thing. Do I think it's feasible in cock? Uh, Agdalene. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's feasible, but uh, so I'm 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 at Chalmers, right? So I did the course called Types for Programs and Proofs, and it's basically just the Agda people that write Agda, right? Under Sabel. Uh, Peter Dibier, all the, uh, you know, Jasper was there. And Ulf Norell, right? And he's like, I'm going to show you how to program in Agda, right? So we had been doing lots of proofs, but now he's going to show us how to program. The first thing he does is like, let me turn off the termination checker. Boom. So you can definitely do it, but you have to, you know I mean, you're not, you want to be able to run programs that don't terminate. Or you have to provide fuel or what. But it takes a lot to uh, hunger. But Haskell is the golden median road where almost every type is inferable, but uh, it's still very powerful, right? So you don't have to do, you, have to, you don't have to annotate everything. Wait. All right, let's start day seven. Yeah, and then we will have caught up, not catched up. Little Annie is sending me, ah, camel cards, camel t-shirt. Uh, little Annie is sending me grammatical corrections, which is good. At least someone is paying attention to the grammar. Uh, let me see. Did you bring the parts? A oh, large camel. I was riding a camel in India like a week ago. Good times. Um, let's see. Very large rock. Elf explains rocks. Desert Island, normally big machines. Receiving the parts. And now we're playing camel cards. Let's see. Wow, don't let the camel people hear you say that. Uh, it is like an ML variant. They have a nice module system. Uh, everything is eager, so you don't have to deal with laziness, but you also don't get easy laziness everywhere and you have objects I mean they like it I don't know when you would chose a camel over Haskell but uh, you know like Jane Street that was advertising here earlier they uh, make a lot of money and it's all written in a camel or a lot of it so it's practical they like to tease us the Haskell paper because we use dollar signs everywhere to, to, to say you know evaluate everything after this dollar and they're like why are they putting dollars if we're not making money well the thing with Haskell is that you don't know that it's Haskell because it never crashes so you don't get this oh Haskell crashed error message but there's Haskell at Facebook at Google at um, like uh, a AHRFs is there, Mercur Mercurial is there, Cardano is all Haskell. There's a lot of Haskell out there in the wild, but uh, yeah, we like doing more fun stuff. Anyway, let's get to it. So you get a list of hands, and then we build our base of strength. Five cards label AKQJT9876543232. Okay, A is the highest and two is the lowest. Let me just. Card types equals. 
let me uh... okay so this is a string and then uh, strength takes a char things is equal to so I'm just gonna do a very silly thing find index um, Alright, let's not do it this way. Cardano gets one update a year because no one knows how to program Haskell. Well, they are learning. I don't know. Is it worth it to learn to program in Haskell and then you don't lose millions of dollars on some bug? Maybe. Uh... Let's just write it out. Two is equal to zero. Three two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. There's a better way to do this, but uh, I think this will be the fastest. T. T J. So I could like look up in the string and then find the index all the time. But I okay, this might be pretty much your optimization. Bear with me. Um, how's the audio quality, by the way? Is it okay? I, I used to have a better setup with like a noise gate and stuff, but. Uh, it's not working. Let's see. Maybe we can get it working at some point. Okay. Uh, every hand is exactly one type. From the strongest to weakest, they are five of a kind, four of a kind, full house, three of a kind. Moon pair and a high card. Okay. This seems like a long description, but uh, let's see. It's 
So five of a kind. Is um let's do it here. For data that's set. Now let's see um and to type takes in a string and returns data. And type is equal to five of a kind or um, four of a kind or full. Let's actually order it in the opposite way. Ah, yeah. I card one pair two pair three of a kind let's see so this is just the So hand to type, let's just say that this is going to be int hand to type str is equal to uh, set dot from list string set dot size. And it doesn't like this because I already took in the string here. So uh, the idea is that so um, if the set size is one like there's only one it's going to be all of them are the same right if uh, all of them except one are the same it's going to be the set size is going to be four no set size is going to be two uh but the set size might be like a a uh-huh Okay, we can't do it. It's not that easy. But it's it would be nice if we had uh, Let's just do then a uh, sort. So we sort it and then we we group it and then we um, we do maximum by length let's see here okay uh, compare on 
No, you have to import data dot function on. So we take the length of the maximum by compare on. Okay, so then we have, you know, so if it has all five, that's gonna be five. If it has, so then we just have the AAA and then four. Ah, uh, so full house is different. So then we just do like this, okay? Sort by. Let's do here. K sort by of So if it's a map things I think I'm, I'm over complicating this a lot but whatever so if we have a uh, five data hand type back to the hand types a uh, High card one pair, two pair, three of a kind, full house, four of a kind, five of a kind. Deriving EQ show or So if we have this if it's just one group everything is the same it's five of a kind Where Sort it equal sort string. Uh, right. Had to type a uh, hand type. So this is five of a kind, uh, four of a kind. It's gonna be four comma one. Full house is uh, three two. Okay, three of a kind is gonna be three on one. And uh, two pairs is going to be two to one. And one pair is going to be two, one, one, one. And then one, 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 
one one high card okay so now let's write um data hand is equal to hand string hand type uh, <coughs> um, deriving EQ show so now we're doing instance word and where compare h1 h2 is equal to um, hand s s1 t1 um, and s2 t2 is equal to um, t1 is equal to t2 then um, Can you compare lists? Let's see. Um Ah, okay, you can just compare the list then compare map Else Let's see um, Let's see equals compare T1, T2 in if case uh, compare T1, T2 of EQ Let's see if any of this uh, even compiles. Okay, compiles. Let's see, because uh, uh, T hand type. So if I compare high card with two pair, then I get that high card is less than two pair, right? Because uh, <coughs> the derived ORT instance is just makes so that the first ones are less than the latter ones. Okay, um,
and uh, and string uh. okay now let's write in the example here And let's just spare us some parsing again. No, actually, I think we should parse. Uh, because I'm guessing the input is a lot longer, a lot more hands. Sometimes this happens, I don't know. I think the editor gets caught up in some wrong... ...state. Okay. Um, ours example... It's gonna take... is going to be taking a string to and comma bit int parse entry a stir is equal to um, and comma bit Split at five equals to um, two hand instance read hand where. Read and I forgot how to do the read instance. Who go read instance read? They read at hand. Let's set the right 
language here. Uh, print. Print to print map parse entry example. Okay, we parse the hands. Now let's see what we are supposed to do. But at least we know how to compare hands as well. Five hands, okay. Each hand is followed by a bid amount. Each hand wins an amount equals to its bid multiplied by its rank. Weakest hand gets rank one, second weakest hand gets rank two. Okay, so let's see. Sort by compare on first. So three, two, oh, so it's first. KTJJT gets rank one, rank two, and KK677 gets rank three. And okay, so it's in the right, it's in the right order. Okay, so part one is equal to um, sort by compare on first dot map parse entry. Okay, and then we are going to uh, sip sip with one okay so we can take the ID and we can take that we don't care about the hand we care about the bid so now this is gonna be the A list of numbers and then we sum it up right six four four zero nice let's make an input file input uh, let's see read file input to print dot part one uh, dot lines okay nice day seven part one is there now to finish part two let's see what happens Okay, the elf introduces one additional rule. No, J cards are jokers. Wild cards that can act like whatever card would make the hand, the hand the strongest type possible. Oh, J cards are now the weakest. Okay, let's just re-implement this.
card strength tube. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So now to get the hand type we're going to have to we're going to have to mix it up a bit more A uh, hand to type two. Okay, so if they are all the same, there is nothing we can do. So first of all, where um, <laughs> so let's just uh, make some cases based on the number of uh, number of jacks in it. Uh, I think that's easiest. Where uh, let's see. Where NJ's is equal to filter is equal to J. Length stir. So What is that function called? It's not span, it's the partition, right? Not J's and J's is equal to partition and num j's is equal to length j's okay and now we are going to say um ht um non j groups okay string okay case num js is equal to zero is equal to case non j groups of Okay, if mjs is equal to 5, 
it is simply um, gonna be a five of a kind. If numjs is equal to, so these are the base cases, right? Now, if there's a one, then we're just going to do like this. Um, there's going to be four. So if there's four of anything, it's going to be five of a kind. If there's three of anything, it's going to be four of a kind. If it's two, we can add the jack to either of them to make a full house. If it's two, one, one, it's going to be three of a kind. Um, and there is no high card. Okay, so if it's a... Uh, one 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 we can add one 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 then we can have a hmm let me see if there is a j we're always going to be better than a high card So, yeah, so we'd never make a two pair because we could always make a three of a kind here. Okay. That's for the two K, one case. So for the two, if we have three, we can have five of a kind. If we have two, we can have four of a kind. Um, and if we have one, 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 we can get three of a kind. And that's always the best, right? We're never going to get a full house because then we would have done, uh, we would have done four of a kind. So three, again, we have two of it, it's gonna be five of a kind. If there's one, one, we're gonna make four of a kind. Okay, uh, if it's five or four, it's gonna be five of a kind. Okay. I think this will work. <coughs> now, um, now we have to do the compare again. Compare two takes a um, string to string it's gonna take a hand uh, string comma hand hand type string comma hand type to ordering Compared to is equal to uh, S1 S1 T1 S2 
T2. And we have this same thing again. Uh, case compare T1, T2 of EQ. Um, compare compare map card strength to T1. No, S1 map card strength to card strength to S2 otherwise it's just X to X now uh, then map so we're gonna we're gonna parse it a little bit differently We're not gonna say read hand that hand. We're just gonna say uh, hand, hand, hand to, and then uh, this is gonna be hand to type two hand, and here we're parsing hand. Okay, um, and now we're going to say sort by compare two on first map parse entry two. See uh, a and <laughs> print part two. Okay, non exhaustive patterns in case. <laughs> Let's see. Now we're putting uh, debug dot trace. Okay, so here we're in the two case. And it's a uh, Trace show ID. Ah. Uh. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, this is... This is supposed to be NJS. Oh, okay. I just messed it up here. This is non-Js. Trace show ID link Js, sort non-Js. Okay, now it's correct. This is how I debug Haskell, by the way. I usually just uh, pop in a trace show ID in there. And uh, unless you're working on really big code bases, it, it works quite well. Let's see. Boom. Day seven done. Not bad. One and a half hour for two days. That's uh, that's good. So let's uh, see and move on, right? Let's see if how far we get with uh, today's advent of code. But give me a break. I'm gonna have a little sip of water. I'll be back in ooh, two minutes. Okay, <clears throat> we got some water. Let's do day eight. We're on a roll. Okay, you're still writing a camel across the desert island when it's about a sandstorm. Okay, ghosts. Interesting. Uh, one of the camel's pouches labeled maps. Oh my god. This is going to take a while. Um, and how to navigate a desert, at least. Pretty sure that's what they are. One of the documents contains a list of left-right instructions and the rest of the seem to describe some kind of network of labeled nodes. It seems like you're meant to use the left-right instructions to navigate the network. Perhaps if you have the camel follow the same instructions, you can escape the haunted wasteland. A and Z. Okay. So 
So A, you need to look up the next element based on the next left, right instruction in your input. Start with A and go right by choosing the right element of A, C. Then L means to choose the left element of C, Z. So then you choose Z. Of course, you might not find Z, Z right away. If you run out of left, right instructions, uh, repeat the whole sequence of instructions as necessary. RL really means limo. Here's a situation that takes six steps to reach Z, Z, Z. Starting at A, how many steps are required to reach Z? Okay. We got a lot of input. Let's see. Get at day seven hundred fifty-six. Day eight. Eight touch day eight dot edges touch input. Okay, let's just paste the input. And let's example one. And let's make example two. Okay. What you mean where? Paris, let's just have the example here on the side to read. So Paris, uh, it's going to take a string, no, a list of strings, and it's going to return something. We don't know yet. Paris. Okay, so first is the path, and then empty, and then the rest. Path, empty. Notes. So, uh, the path, we are just going to... It's going to be a list of booleans. And the nodes are just going to be um, string actually I'm just going to be clever right away and just going to say int in comma int. So uh, the first one here is just going to be map if c k c of L true no R is true L is false path uh, 
and um, where loads equals main io to print read file example one into print dot parse dot lines let's see Okay, so we parse the first one, so the nodes um, So for the nodes, we are going to parse node Parse node is true. So we saw from the input that they're all they're all three of length three. So we are just gonna count on that, and we're gonna say um, a node n. rest is going to be split at three stream then we are going to jump over the this part split at three rest Actually, this so this part, and then we're gonna say so the left node and then the right node, but in between is gonna be. Gonna take these two equals uh, n ln n n. Okay, so we're gonna say map. Um, map uh, ps parse results is going to be map parse node nodes okay now we are going to say um i i just want to i want them to be integers import qualified data.map as map import data.map map so now I'm gonna say a key map is a gonna be dot from list zip uh, map first ps And then I'm just gonna map look up all of them. 
and Ellen. All right. So it's going to be key map. map Okay, it doesn't seem to work. Uh, because this is actually four characters. Okay, now I have the list of nodes. And then I want... Um... I want to know where set 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 is and I want to know where AAA is Okay. Sorry, just getting some messages. Okay, so now we have the instructions, we have the map. This should actually be a an int map.
It's just easier that way. And then we can just um, look it up directly. So now let's say um, part one. So, um, so path. Uh, notes A A A set 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 is equal to uh, pars okay so let's see um, There's a function called cycle uh, where we can just actually we just say go cycle path and we're just gonna say the current one so go So this is the P and the PS, and it's never going to run out because we cycled it. Current node is equal to, and we're going to say zero. Current steps. So, case a current node is equal to set, set, set. It's equal to current steps. Otherwise, otherwise, is equal to if p, then. So P was, uh, ah, we want to take the, I want to take the first one, so I'm just going to have it left and right here. If P, let's see, so then we're going to say, um, map I am dot bang. Per node LN RN Okay, if P then um, go PS steps plus one left node and I should really uh, I should add bang patterns here because I really don't want this to build up okay uh, Ellen If P then L and else. Alright. Read file example one. Uh, ah. Some Haldi milk. It's good for health. So 
So what's going to happen is that there's going to be loops and it's going to take hella long if I'm going to follow all the loops. So print dot So what we want to do is we want to figure out the length of a loop um, and then kind of jump over that in the string. But let's see. What if we're in a loop? Yeah, anyway. Let's see what happens. So two steps. Six steps. Let's just test with the input. But I think, you know, we're going to probably need some cleverness here. Okay, maybe not for part one. All right. Day eight, part one, done. No clever list needed. We just made sure to do it efficiently with int maps. So holy milk is this Indian thing. I think it's a uh, turmeric and milk and it's warm. It's good. Let me see. Okay. They eat. Okay, let's see. You had the camel follow the instructions, but you barely left your starting position. Oh no. You start at every node that ends with A. Let's see. This is gonna be a pain. But let's see if we can make it work. Um, so now we are gonna We're gonna do the same pars. But instead of uh, just returning these two, we're gonna return the list of all A nodes and list of all B nodes, no, said nodes.
and there's gonna be a list of ints and this will be a list of ints okay um, let's see um, No names. This is it going to be filter? Let's see. Okay, so this is gonna be A notes. Map, key map. Parse two dot lines. Let's see. So there's zero and one, one, three. Okay, so these are correct. I'm actually gonna make this a set. An inset. And then for part two, so the trick is we don't actually need to, like, so maybe for some of them we're going to end up being at the same places at the same time. So what we're really, really doing... Um, is... Um, So, uh, cur steps, pp as cur notes. And so, cur notes. Um, uh, 
So we just want to check if these are the same set. Oh, no, we want to check if all of them... Basically, if... If I remove all the empty nodes... If I remove all the set nodes from cur nodes, I want uh, an empty set. Otherwise... They should also be bang. So no go is uh, just uh, doing the same, except it's transforming a set instead of um, the set. I don't think there's a way to do that directly. <laughs> okay. If P, then we want to take all the left nodes. If P, then uh, cur nodes bias dot map. Let's see. Uh, if P, then I want to take, so I'm going to take in the key here. And uh, if P, then I am dot bang notes cur node. Let me see. So I think I can write it like this. I am. I am dot bang notes and dot and then if p then fst else s and d
Sí. Okay, works for the example. Let's see if it works on the input. Yeah, there's gonna be some looping stuff. Um, it's probably going to be the case that um, like uh, some of them will be in a loop so we don't have to do them let me check the memory use It's not leaking memory, so it's just doing its thing. Let me see, um, Now it's prime. It's like this. How is AOC going? It's going great! Eric Wassel, you are the creator, right? Uh, I'm trying to solve day 8 now. I started a bit late. So I did day 1, 2 and 3. Then day 4 and 5. And today I did 6 and 7, but now I'm on day 8 part 2. And uh, the brute force solution is not working, even though it's quite efficient Haskell. Um, yeah, there's gonna be some loops and stuff. I'm trying to do like a whole set of numbers at the same thing time. 
and it's it's not doing the thing so let me just see how many nodes am I doing at the same time trace show I guess that size uh, curve no it's prime this should be I guess that size let's see so I'm just doing six notes at the same time. So it's not that there's a huge number of nodes. Maybe I should, um, yeah, I need to, oh. A bug in GHC. <laughs> Do you remember who it was? Because that's funny. They must have been doing like uh, some type level stuff. Let me copy the address. Look at it while it runs. Hey. That is. Ah, it's in the standard lib. Running parser for data format integers. Ah, that's funny. I didn't run into this because I uh, I split it differently. Very nice. Yeah, this is like the the read instance is just ah very cool. It's fun to. I would have thought like um, you would have think you would have thought that something like this would have been found way earlier, right? But I guess that like all the production people, they don't use the read instance right they will use like a proper parser like mega parsec or something like that so it hasn't showed up yet okay let me delete this should not be printing anything out yeah okay so So this checks if all of them are said nodes at the same time. And we're, we're mapping like six, there are six A nodes and then we're mapping them all we're mapping them all at the same time. Yeah, no, but I think it's it's been a very fun uh, advent of code this year. Um, like day five part two was a bit hard because I mean it wasn't like it wasn't like oh I need a good data structure here. It was just you know <laughs> you had to you had to split up the cases and then do a bunch of these um, and that worked out. But it was fun. And then I liked day seven part, no, day six part one, because you can just use like a quadratic formula. So it just works quite fast. But uh, day seven was nice also. But day eight part two is currently stumping me. Ah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest it's been fun um, I remember a couple of years ago it was very hard in Haskell because you 
you made this puzzle where you had like a, a virtual machine or something and you were constantly running code and instructions on the machine and then you would have the machine modify yeah exactly int code it would like modify the code itself yes 2019 and um, it was very hard in Haskell because you had to like to make it efficient you, you needed to use like the state monad to kind of be able to mutate the data structure efficiently right because you couldn't just copy the whole thing with a one change in it uh, and I I had a lot of fun with it, right? Because it was a lot of uh, like efficiency hacking in Haskell. So far uh, this year, it's been very like there's no like oh this is super hard in Haskell would have been easy in other languages. Um, but I'm excited to see where it takes us. I like the the lore this time. It's a bit funny. The whole we're trying to get snow, so then we went to get sand, and then we took an airplane. Surprisingly easy in Haskell. I mean, some of these are very nice in Haskell. Like, um, like day seven, for instance, right? So after I put it in the right kind of data structure, you know, the actual solution is just, um, you know, sorting on the right operator and then multiplying and then taking the sum. And that, you know, I always like it when it kind of comes down to a very simple one-liner, like the actual solution after you put it into the right data structure. But um, so the thing is that I don't solve them in other languages in Haskell. So I don't I, I don't know how easy things would have been. Like, oh, this would have been super hard in Python. Um, but I like it. It's, it's a lot of fun to be able to also play around with Haskell, right? Because it's also a perfect... It's the perfect size of a project to play around with, right? Because you're not going to be writing 10,000 lines of code for one solution, right? You're writing like 1,000 lines of code at the most, usually like 200 or 300. And Haskell is a great language for exactly that length. Exactly. No, but it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, and I've streamed... Since uh, 2020, every year I stream Advent of Code in Haskell. I think I've never finished though, because uh, I usually so I live in Sweden, but I go I but I'm from Iceland, so I go home to Iceland around the 20th uh, or something like that, and it's it's very hard to stream and keep up because at that point also you're not spending like an hour you're spending like three or four hours usually for me and that's just a it's a long stream right it's a long time to just be sitting there programming and looking into a camera and I think it's a uh, it's been very successful I think everyone's having fun um, Especially in the FP community, there's a lot of people doing it in Haskell. Uh, a lot of people uh, doing it in OCaml. And I think it's because we like these simple problems. Because you can kind of make it very elegant. But you can also make it... Uh, like you're not... You don't have to deal with like factory factories and kind of stuff that crops up when you have to do huge programs, right? Yes. Well, let's see. I think I need to do something different here. It is for sure not finishing. The good thing is that it's not eating... Uh, no, I, it's not eating up memory. So if I keep running this, it will finish eventually. Yeah, I'm doing part two of day eight. 
right now. Um, so part one was quite nice. You just follow the instructions, right? The title loop. And then I thought, ah, maybe I can do the exact same thing in part two, but use uh, this set, right? So instead of saying uh, map this number and then check if you're at the other number, I say, uh, you know, map this set of nodes and see if you reach the other set of nodes. And the nice thing about that is that if at some point the set gets smaller, um, then, you know, so we, we might be running like 100 A nodes at once and then they kind of coalesce and they go get into the same nodes. And then it should be smaller and then it should just work. But uh, it's not, it's not uh, fast enough. It's been running now for, yeah, five minutes, 10 minutes. No, exactly, that's, uh, but you know, so you had this discussion with, because uh, we don't talk too much to the, like the object oriented community, like the FP community and the object oriented community are not, they don't talk so much together. Um, and, but there's things that we could share, right? Like things like, um, like where do you put a function, right? So in the object oriented world, you just put it in the object and it kind of works. But for Haskell, you know, you see, you need to think like, do I put it in this module or do I put it next to the data definition or do I put it next to the use site? Um, and in object oriented, like in the object oriented world, they have long dialogues about this and like the sign. Uh, uh, patterns and stuff like that but for us we have we don't we, we don't have that discussion so but we are starting to have it so it's going to go good let me see okay 10 minutes uh, didn't work common denominator yeah that was a little bit of a spoiler but let's see um, do, 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 do. uh -huh. Okay, so you can see here in the first one that, so 11a, it just goes 11a, and then, aha. Now I get it. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much for making it see. But I figured this out. This is the Chinese modulo theorem. You need to figure out the length of all the paths, and then you take the module off the huge stuff. Ha! Ah. That's good. Um, okay, let's see. So, uh, part one. Let's see then. Okay, so let's change this up. <laughs> because now I'm like simulating it until I hit the thing, but yeah, the common denominator is a good, good way to do it. So let's see, part two. I'm just going to copy the part one go again.
Okay, and uh, let's see. Um, so uh, okay. A else x equal to um, Map go cycle path zero ales. is that member <laughs> okay let's see what this one does so two and three and what is it for the input okay So the least common denominator between all of these so the so I think if I have it correctly right so I'm gonna finish it and then see what happens but I think the idea is that so so Let me just seek check the least common denominator. Chinese remainder theorem. Do 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 do. So how, how does it work, okay? So the idea is that um, like for this one, it gets into a loop, right? So one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, two, okay? And then, so, but they don't match up here, right? So it's easy if you have two numbers 
you just multiply them together. Uh, but I think you need like the Chinese remainder theorem for more than. So you need to find a number that is a multiple of all of these numbers. Find a number that is a multiple of many numbers. Yeah, so this is the LCM and uh, so it's the least common multiple, right? least common multiple. Yeah, so the... okay, exactly. Do I need to factor all these numbers? <sighs> Let's see. Factor int factor n is equal to um, so I'm just gonna make a super slow version. Haskell has LCM in base. Right. But this is not the... Um, Go. 
go so go of empty is equal to n go of uh, factor factors is equal to if n mod f then f uh, div f factor Here she eat day eight. Else go with us. Factor twenty one. Factor 30 Okay Let's see I think 307 is the least common multiple here. <laughs> yeah, it works. That's exactly the point, Orphan. It's the same as with a quadratic thing, right? It, it's not wrong. It's just not... Uh, it's not... Um, Yeah, it doesn't work well enough. So here, I think now we can take the... Factor each number and express it as a product of prime number powers. Okay. Let's see... Uh... Product times three hundred seven <laughs> Let me see. We finished day eight. Yeah, so that's the thing, right? The, the solution here is, it's not wrong, right? It's that's it's, it's not the case that it's wrong. It's just not efficient enough, right? Because we're looking, 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 and this number here is quite big. It is uh, 12 trillion. That is crazy big. So the trick is here that, uh, let me see. LCM of 
a list of numbers LCM is equal to Okay, so here we're gonna first So we map the factors and then we okay the highest power of each prime number together Okay, so we have the factors and then we need to we group the factors. Now this is going to be I'm multiplying the highest is that is that it Ah, okay. Apparently you don't need to factor or anything like that. You can just fold our LCM. Which makes sense. You find the least common multiple between two numbers and then that number and least, yeah. So you just keep going. Okay, cool. You don't even need to know the base case, right? <sighs> but all right, so now we've done We 
we've done uh, everything there is so far I push the code to uh, github you can check it out there um, I kind of like this solution I went with a naive one first uh, it's way too slow because it's like 12 trillion operations but I kept saying uh, you know there's gonna be some loops right so but then P. Cookerthy, I don't know how to pronounce that username, uh, suggested the least common multiple. And uh, it worked. And it makes sense, right? Because they're all going to be in a loop because the uh, instructions are cycling anyway, right? And then you just kind of figure out um, when like how many steps would you have to take so that they all happen to be in set at the same time so one thing that i think messes it up a little bit is that um so the the the, the, the reason this works is that I think they're all going to different sets, right? So, for instance, if I, if this set here would link to this set here, that would then link to this set here again, right? Then, after you've taken a certain amount of steps, you would just be looping between sets, right? You would not be going back to the start uh, and going around around there right especially like you know if, if, if you take enough steps and then one of them just stays in said right um, then you don't have to find the least common multiple for that one because that one is always going to be in said afterwards it just so happens that they're all kind of looping and I think it's because Eric who showed up the creator of Advent Code you know, he makes it so that you can do these things to make it work. But I, I'm not... I think we should read the... Uh, I th so I think it, I think it would be messed up. If you, could, if you had these weird kind of notes, right? But we didn't have that this time. So the least common multiple works. Okay. Thanks for showing up. Uh, the video for day four and five is live right now. I set it for 11. This one will be a live uh, live in 24 hours and i thank you for joining thank you for uh helping out i probably would have worked too way too hard on this least common multiple thing and uh yeah see you tomorrow when we do day nine on day nine of that code all right thanks for today okay bye bye